Hey everybody, this is Jason Creel and you're watching the Lawn Care Life. I started a mowing business years ago and I looking back, I really made a lot of mistakes that I believe cost me tens of thousands of dollars. In this video, I'm gonna go over seven mistakes and tell you exactly what I did wrong and hopefully, if you're starting a lawn business, or maybe you're in a lawn business, you can evaluate your own situation and keep from making these mistakes and cost you that much money. Let's do that right now. I talk to a lot of people about starting a lawn care business, and I truly believe that it is a great business to be in still today. And I have failed at another business, which just reiterated the fact to me that the lawn business is a great opportunity. Here's the mistakes that I've made in my business when I started mowing lawns. The first one had to do with the pricing and my pricing structure was wrong in many ways. Okay, let me just try to explain to you some of the mistakes I made from pricing. So I had an idea that I needed to get some year round pricing in there. I needed to you know, try to get some year round income. And so what do I do? Basically what I did was I would take a yard, let's say it was a $40 yard, okay? And I would figure out how many cuts it was for the year, and I would multiply that by 40, and then divide that by 12. And, and you may have had that advice, and I don't think it's necessarily a terrible idea, but here's where I went wrong. With some homeowners, and, and you may have a written contract, you may not have a, a written contract, but let's say it came out to $150 a month, you know, when you did the math. Well, I wasn't actually doing much of anything in the winter time because there, there really wasn't much to do. You know, once you got the lease clear, there wasn't anything to do. Well, it didn't happen often, but occasionally when somebody wanted to cancel on me, when do you think they canceled? You'd think they canceled in, in February, right before the grass started needing mowing in, in March. No, they didn't. They canceled in November or late October. After you did that last cut, and you basically, what I look at it is, you pretty much have been giving them a discounted rate all summer long. I mean, I'm charging them $150 and mowing their grass every week. Uh, sometimes, you know, if the days fall right, you're mowing it five times in a month, you're giving them a discounted rate, hoping that on the back end, uh, in the winter time, you could make up for the discount you were giving them. Well, you, you did make up for it, but I tell you what, just a better idea to me is if in that situation, I'm not opposed to year round contracts or anything, but unless there's some work for you to do year round, or you have a written signed contract, which traditionally is done with these commercial properties, and it can work with homeowners too, um, but it, it didn't work for me because some of them would cancel on me in the fall and I found that to be a mistake. Another mistake I made with the pricing was this. I would charge people a monthly rate instead of a uh, a weekly rate, you know, or instead of per cut. And here's where I went wrong on that. Let's say I was cutting your yard every other week at $50. But what happens about two or three times a year is that you're gonna get three cuts in a month instead of just two. Or the same if you're doing weekly, instead of cutting it four times, sometimes the way the days fall, there's gonna be five cuts in a month. Well, when me charge them that monthly rate, let's say it was $50, and I just charged, I said, well, I'm just going to do $100 a month. And and then when you get that extra cut, it was almost like you were just giving it to them for free. It was still $100 a month. And I'm like, why was I doing that? That's 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 not smart, okay? You, you don't want to work for free. And so you really weren't charging them $50 per cut because you're doing a free cut every now and then, and it just cuts your, your profit. So uh, I'm a big believer, going back to the annual thing, if, if, you, if you have a true annual contract, that's fine, where there's work year round but don't cheat yourself in the summer to hope to make up for the winter. Just be disciplined. I mean, honestly, I'd rather get all the money in January if I can. Now that takes some discipline, um, but money has leverage. And if you can use that money to invest it over the course of the year, it's better to get it all in January than to wait. And you sure don't want to cheat yourself all summer long, hoping you get it back in the winter time. The second mistake I made in my lawn business, and again, when I started, it, it was, uh, the marketing was a little bit different. Did a lot of door hangers and postcards, which things that can still work. Um, but I didn't get a website early enough on my business. I have a website now and it actually is one of the, the most powerful, if not the most powerful thing I do for marketing for my business. And the leads come in from that. And I didn't have a website. And, and let me just say this about websites. You can build one yourself. You can hire somebody to build one, whatever you want to do as far as that goes. 
Um, but if you're going to be in the lawn business for a long time, it is a great opportunity. Now, a, a bad website that doesn't rank well on the search engines is not very helpful to you, just to be honest with you. But if you have a, a decent website and you're able to rank on Google for your area, you know, I tell people all the time, like if you if you live in Atlanta, Georgia, you might not try to be the number one lawn care on Google in Atlanta, Georgia. That's going to be a difficult task. People are paying a lot of money for SEO, search engine optimization, to rank well on Google. But if you might can find a, a suburb of Atlanta where you could target and try to be the number one lawn care in that area, preferably one close to where you live. Um, but you know your website is a very powerful marketing tool and I would recommend getting one of those done if you're going to be in the lawn business for the long haul and if you're taking it seriously. The third mistake I want to highlight in this video and it's related to marketing but not enough networking. I'll say this, maybe I did enough networking but I was networking with the wrong people. I got some advice when I started I was like, hey Jason, you need to go uh, talk to some real estate agents. You know, they're always dealing with homeowners, buying houses, selling houses. Well, I'm not saying real estate agents are, are a bad place to start, but I would not say that's your best place. I'll tell you what the best place is in my opinion. Uh, if you're mowing grass, I would get to know the guys that are doing the weed control and fertilization because I'm a weed control guy now and I get asked for mowing recommendations a lot and if you're weed control fertilization i would get to know the mowing guys because they're getting asked a lot who do you recommend for weed control and fertilization so that to me is your prime networking opportunity and you need to take advantage of that and you can find those people locally at the gas station or you can find them on the internet or on facebook or wherever now networking uh with real estate agents what i found was most of the time the real estate agent wants to cut when they want it cut for the cheapest price possible to make it look good for a picture just to get it sold and make their thousands of dollars and honestly i don't think the real estate agent is the one that pay you you got to try to get the money from the homeowner so i found the real estate agents very often did not have my best interest in mind and that's not necessarily their fault they're trying to sell the house but it just was not a great partnership. Now I did have one good situation one time where I started doing the entrance way to the neighborhood and I got to know the builder and he had about 20 vacant houses there and he had me mowing the 20 houses until they sold. And you talk about some route density when you get 20 houses all in the same neighborhood when nobody lives there, there's no cars, there's no bicycles, there's no toys, there's no dog poop. It was really profitable and I, uh, that might be an opportunity to look into. The fourth colossal mistake I made in my lawn care business was not sitting down and actually evaluating anything. The reason I made these mistakes and I made them year after year was because I didn't really sit down at the end of the year and said, what went right and what went wrong this year? You know, winter time's a great time to do this, but you should at least do it annually, but probably more so. And you should probably allow somebody who has good business sense outside of your business uh, and maybe outside your family who's unbiased to look at your actual business, somebody you trust and can show them the numbers and they may see a gaping blind spot in your business and said, this is not good business, Jason. You're making a huge mistake here that's costing you a lot of money. So evaluate your business and see, is there a customer that, that you know pays me late every time and lives way out of the way and I'm charging way too little? I mean, I've got to go up on them or drop them or do something. you know, Or maybe, wow, this neighborhood is an absolute gold mine. I have the, the, the best customers are all here together. Why not try to add more customers in that area? Or, well, Jason, I'm looking at your year-end numbers and you spent a lot of money fixing your lawnmowers. Maybe you need to look at upgrading a mower and evaluate whether you should buy used equipment or maybe new equipment or whether you should pay cash or finance it or whatever you need to do. But just somebody with some good business sense and you can learn and begin to gain and lean on other people's experience until you're able to you know, gain your own experience. The fifth mistake I want to highlight is not focusing enough on my route density. As I look back at my business, 
I do remember having a, a mowing route and I had one stop where we had seven or eight yards on the same street, tiny little yards, but it was like a three man crew and we could do those in about an hour. Now, if you do seven yards in an hour, uh, that's pretty profitable. Now they were, they were little, but you know, you get one person on the mower, one person on a string trimmer, one person on the edger, and whoever finishes first grabs a blower and starts blowing and you're just knocking them out so fast. You don't even have to move the truck and it was great. And I'm thinking, wow, why didn't I pattern my whole business after that? Why didn't I focus my marketing on those neighborhoods and really try to wrap up and dominate one or two or three or four neighborhoods instead of just taking whoever calls, wherever they live. Oh yeah, you're 45 minutes away and you're the only house out there. Sure, I'll take it on. I mean, it just, sometimes we do stuff that just doesn't, totally doesn't make sense. And the other thing too, I think in, in, within this is not being specific enough in the service that I offer. So somebody comes along and says, hey, can you uh, lay some sod at my house? And you don't know what you're doing. You don't have the setup to do it. It ends up being a pain. You underbid it and it's just a bad deal altogether. So focus on what you're doing. You know, whether that be more, I'm not saying you can't expand to other opportunities. You maybe should, but make sure you're prepared and you're focused and you have the equipment to be profitable and efficient, whatever you're doing. Like for me right now, I do weed control and fertilization and that's what I do. I do weed control and fertilization. Somebody says, "You can you lay sod? I had to call you the other day. Can you trim my peach tree? No. I mean, actually I can, I can trim a peach tree, but I'm sorry, ma'am, we don't offer those services and that's it. I, I'm not interested in trimming a peach tree. I mean, I don't, it doesn't even matter what she wants to pay. I'm sure it wasn't gonna be a, a whole lot, but uh, I'm just not gonna get off track of what I do on a day in, day out basis that I'm set up for that's extremely profitable and I wanna focus more on that. If I wanna grow my business, guess what? I wanna grow it by getting more weed control and fertilization customers because that's what I do. The sixth mistake I wanna to highlight today is not increasing my prices. Not only was I undercharging people, I sat down and I thought, oh, well, what if I go up? Are they gonna cancel on me? Oh, uh, you know, and I, I like, uh, I listened to Paul Jameson, uh, his podcast, his Green Industry Podcast, and Paul talks about increases price. He talks about when he started his business, made the same mistake, you know, and he tells people, and I agree with this, if your price is too low, like increase it right now. Don't wait till the end of the year. Don't say, well, I'm gonna just continue to be unprofitable on this account for the next six months and then next year I'll raise it. If, it, if it's low, it doesn't matter. What, what You would rather lose the customer than continue doing it at an unprofitable rate. So raise your prices immediately. Look at your pricing structure. And here's what I found. As I've raised prices in my business and I don't raise prices all the time. Matter of fact, I'm not, not one of those that just raises it every year. I would uh, like to go more the, the strategy of raising your prices every three years or something like that. So instead of going up 1% every year, maybe go up 3% every three years, or you know, or what if you need to go up 5% every three years to keep up with inflation or whatever you need to do, it's fine. Um, but what I have found is once you've established that customer and they trust you and you're doing a good job and they know you're a business owner and you're trying to make money, yeah, you might lose a couple that are just always price shoppers and be honest with you, those are probably not your ideal customer anyway, but most of the time you're not going to lose very many customers at all. Matter of fact, I mean, I can think of very few examples where I've lost a customer by increasing the price. Again, I'm not going up 20% on them. I'm not just doing anything crazy and I don't go up every year. Um, but when you every few years need to increase prices, the customers most of the time understand it. And if they don't, then it's probably not an ideal customer anyway. And if they can't afford the services, then there's no shame in that. If, if somebody can't afford the services, then they need to cancel and I, I encourage them to. I mean, I don't want them, you know, causing themselves financial hardships just to keep my lawn business going. It's fine, I've got plenty of customers. Um, but you need to increase your prices because things go up over time and inflation is also a factor. And so don't sit there with the same price, especially if it's too low, you need to increase it tomorrow. And the last thing I wanna mention, and this, to be honest with you, is probably the biggest mistake I made, and you may not agree with it, but not having a good exit plan. Now here's what happened. I sold uh, my first lawn care business. I was approached by someone who was interested in buying it. We talked about it and I got a, a good, uh, decent amount of money for the business. But what happened was I didn't have a good plan 
from that, I was still in the lawn business. I kept a small portion of it. And then now later I've moved and I've started another lawn business. You know, I'm still in the lawn business. But when I sold that first one, if I would have had a transition plan and could have one made good decisions with that money I talked about earlier about failing in another business, I took some of that money and tried a different uh, business that didn't work out so well and wasted some of that money. And I, and I kind of relaxed. I kind of took foot off the gas pedal. You hear about like football teams and they get up by two touchdowns and they kind of relax and other team come back and wins. And that's what happened. I got some money in the bank. I took my foot off the gas. I relaxed and I, I really regret it to this day. Now I learned a lot from it, but what I want to do, what I'm trying to do now is to think about my business, not looking to necessarily get rid of it anytime soon, but I want to have a, an exit strategy. You know, I'm not going to be doing yards until I'm 85 years old. So am I going to sell my business? Am I going to hand it off to the next generation? Uh, what, what am I going to do with it? And what am I doing with my profits now? What is my retirement strategy? Am I just taking all the money and just go buy some more lawnmowers or something? No, uh, I want to say, how am I strategically saving for the future? And again, I, I kind of learned that the hard way. I made some mistakes along the way, but that's something I want to critically think about right now. What is my business doing for me? I've got to make enough money, not just to pay my bills, but to also invest for the future so that I can have a strategic exit plan. If you're in the lawn business or thinking of starting a lawn business, then I do have resources available over at LawnCareLife.com, whether you're in the mowing business and I've got the, the new Weed Control Academy out that I just came out with. Uh, recently, there's a couple of options for you there and it's a lot of exclusive videos teaching people how to get in the weed control and fertilization business. Like I said, I have another course out there uh, for those that are looking to get into the mowing business if you're wanting to start that. So check those out, lawncarelife.com. I really appreciate you watching the video. I'd encourage your comments below. Maybe you've got a mistake you wanna add or some advice or some criticism or some compliments or whatever. But if you did like the video, let me encourage you, click the subscribe button, click the thumbs up, and then you can hit the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when I create new content. Talk to you guys later, bye.